today, the day that I'm filming this video is Monday, April 29th, and yesterday was April 28th, Game of Thrones, Battle of Winterfell. Wow, 55 days to film that battle, 750 people on set. Can you imagine having 750 people on set? Having to wrangle those people? Longest battle sequence in any TV show or film, even longer than Helm's Deep in Lord of the Rings. I'm kind of speechless. Let's just take a moment and let that sink in. I'm still letting it sink in. Okay, so this cinematic masterpiece, The Battle of Winterfell, got me inspired to teach you guys all of the ways that I know that you could make your footage look more cinematic. Have you ever gone out and filmed something and you thought it was gonna look really, really good, but then you look at the footage and you're like, eh, it's kind of mediocre. It's not the best that it could be. And you look at other people's footage from the same camera, same setup, and you're like, why does theirs look so much better? Well, there's a good chance that you are not using one of these techniques to make your footage look more cinematic. So I think you're gonna wanna get your pen and pad of paper and do a little checklist. Make sure that you're doing each of these techniques to make your footage look more cinematic. And we've talked about all of these things at some point in some videos, but I just wanted to combine it all into one video. So if you're kind of confused still, your footage still isn't looking the best, Here's your list. This is what you need to do. Number one, 24 frames per second. Technically it's 23.976, but 24 frames per second, this is what you wanna be filming in. If you want a soap opera look, sure, do 30 frames per second. If you want a news look, yeah, do 50 or 60 frames per second. If you wanna be the best gamer, sure, do 240 frames per second. If you want your footage to look the most cinematic you can, do 24 frames per second. The rule here is that anything you want to be real time, normal speed, you're gonna film in 24 frames per second. If you want slow motion, sure, film in 60 or 120 or whatever, but make sure you're conforming it into 24 frames per second. Your sequence, your timeline is always gonna be 24 frames per second. I know this one's controversial. There's gonna be a ton of people saying, I like 60 frames per second. Do 60, it's fine. Number two is the 180 degree shutter rule. And this means that you should always double whatever your frame rates is for your shutter speed. So let's say you're filming in 24 because you should be filming in 24. Your shutter speed is gonna be 48 or 50 if your camera doesn't do 48. Only for heavily stylistic reasons are you gonna use a higher shutter speed or a slower shutter speed. In general, 99% of the time, you're gonna use double whatever your frame rates is. Number three, shallow depth of field. This one's super easy to make your footage look really cinematic. And yeah, it's, it's a bit of a stylistic choice, but in general, all of the Hollywood films, all of the really great TV shows are gonna be filming in a really shallow depth of field. The isolation of your subject, that beautiful background bokeh that you get, that nice blurry background. Get yourself a fast lens and you're saying, I don't have money for that. Get a used 50 mil 1.8, that's like less than $100. You can definitely skip a few times going out to McDonald's or a restaurant or buying that new t-shirt or sweater and just buy the nifty 50. You're gonna get some of that really nice shallow depth of field. Number four, you wanna make your footage look a little bit more cinematic use an anamorphic crop. Just stick on some crop bars, it's really easy. Yes, it would be better to use an actual anamorphic lens, but they do cost an arm and a leg, so they're really hard to come by, they're expensive, they're hard to find really good ones, but it still goes a long way even if you just add the crop bars and it's really easy to do. For example, you can just download the Vashi Visuals PNGs and just overlay them on top of your footage. It's that easy and it's gonna make it look more cinematic. Number five, film in a log profile. Why? 
just to be cool because everybody else is doing it? No, because you're gonna get more dynamic range. And this is one of the big things for really cinematic footage. The more dynamic range, the more cinematic your image is gonna look like. Just like when we talked about the Alexas and why Hollywood uses the Alexa camera so much, it's because they have so much dynamic range. It's a really fast giveaway of a cheap, not cinematic look when you don't have very much dynamic range but the more you have, the more you have this really nice film-like cinematic look. Number six, smooth movement. Again, you might be saying, it's not that big of a deal. I got Ibis, I can just walk or move around. It's totally fine. No, it makes a massive difference if you use something like a gimbal or a glide cam or a dolly. All of those things are gonna make your footage look way more cinematic. If you watch a really high quality movie or TV show, every camera movement is really carefully done and if you saw all of the background the bts of what they're using to do those camera movements you, your mind would probably be blown the fact that they have to do so much work for just a simple zoom in dolly forwards uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Not every shot needs to be ultra smooth, perfect, but make sure you're really thinking about how you move the camera. Number seven is your lighting. And I know this one scares a lot of you guys, but lighting is gonna make way more of a difference than if you're filming in 4K or 1080 or what lens or even camera you're using. With good lighting, you can make a really cheap camera look like a Hollywood cinematic beast. And there's tons of tutorials online that you can watch about lighting. I've done a few of them. But in general, I would say just avoid really flat lighting. Make sure the light is creating some sort of shape to your subject and it's just making it a little bit more dramatic. So for example, like here, instead of having the light just shooting straight at me, I kind of have it from the side and creates the shadow on one side of the face and bright side on one face. It just makes it a little bit more interesting. Light is one of your most important tools to make your footage look more cinematic. Number eight is the composition. You're saying you don't have more money to spend on your footage to make it look more cinematic? That's okay. You don't necessarily need more money. All you need to do is look at your background, look at your foreground. Don't just focus on your subject. Look at what's going on in the background and compose that so it's really directing the attention to your subject. Look at the background, does it add depth or does it fall flat and feel really boring? Look at the background and foreground and figure out how can you work that a little bit better, whether it's using leading lines or depth or symmetry or frames. There's so many different ways that you can use composition to make your footage look more cinematic. Number nine, another free one, color grading. Do not skip this. This is one of the biggest ways that you can make your footage look so much more cinematic. All it takes is some time to go through your footage, color grade it really well. Even if it's just a basic teal and orange look, it's gonna look a lot more cinematic. Just make sure to keep it subtle. Don't go overboard. That's again, kind of like a giveaway of a cheaper look. If your subjects look like Oompa Loompas or if there's no contrast and it just looks like a gray blurry mess and it looks like you filmed in log and forgot to color grade. Avoid that, color grade your footage, keep it subtle, but make sure you're color grading your footage. And lastly, number 10, this one is really, really fun. Make sure you're consuming a lot of cinematic content. Watch a bunch of movies, watch a bunch of TV. You really need to train your eyes to see what's cinematic. And ideally, you would be able to watch a movie or TV show and be able to say what techniques they're using, what kind of lenses, what camera movement, where's the light coming from, you would be able to tell all of those things. If you watch enough content and you have enough understanding about filmmaking, you'll learn to see it and that way you can recreate some of those techniques. You're not watching to copy other people, but you're watching to kind of develop your own style and to develop your eye to see what's cinematic and what's not. Because a lot of times it's just like a simple tweak, turning the camera a little bit or tilting it up or down or changing the light up just a little bit and it's gonna make the world of difference. Train your eyes by watching a lot of cinematic content. And this one's really fun, it's really great. You can just watch, for example, Game of Thrones, and then when your, your mom or your dad or your husband or wife is like, what the heck are you doing, get to work. You can be like, I am, I'm working, I'm studying.
It's a pretty good excuse to binge watch some Game of Thrones. Okay, there you go. 10 ways that you can make your footage look cinematic. And it's great because a lot of these ways don't actually cost you any extra money. You just need to use the things that you have properly. If your footage isn't looking as good as you think it could, go through each of these and make sure you're checking off all 10 of these because it makes a big difference. And if you're saying that it's it's not that big of a deal, I don't use 24 frames per second, I, I film in 60, you're gonna have crappier results and these are the reasons why. So just go through these 10 things. If you're doing them, great. If you're not, start doing them. And who knows, maybe in a few years, you will be filming the next Battle of Winterfell. Who am I kidding? Why am I such a realist? It's very unlikely that any of us are gonna be filming something like that, but you could be working on something really cool and making it look really cinematic. Okay, get out there, go and make some really cinematic content, learn, make, repeat, and I'm just gonna go and uh, sit over there wishing that I had gotten to work on the Battle of Winterfell, cause yeah, that's probably never gonna happen again. Okay, bye.